Uh, good evening. This is the March 8th, 2017 meeting of the Finance Committee, just after 7 o'clock. Our uh, agenda tonight, uh, we're, we've got a few transfers to take care of first, then we're going to review the following budgets. Fire Rescue, Police Department, Emergency Management, the Reserve Fund, Law Budget, Town Hall and General Services, and then we're going to adjourn. We're not going to uh, review minutes tonight. So let's start right off with uh, transfers. We've got three or four of them. First one I have in front of me, this is within the fire department. This is a transfer request of $4,000 going to the medical supplies account from fire suppression. This is to cover an increase in medical supply costs, an increase in call volume. Chief Coleman's here. Chief, good to see you tonight. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. A little background the on uh, the transfer request, please. Uh, it's, as it says in there, just an increase in uh, you know medical costs, and we have seen an increase in the call volume. Okay. Any questions or comments on this? A motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Thank you. Our second transfer, this is uh, with the police department. We've got a couple of transfers. Uh, the first one is a reserve account transfer, and this would be under dispatchers. Amount requested $16,900. Uh, this is for a negotiated contractual wage and step increase for dispatch personnel. Lieutenant Harrigan's here. Nice to see you tonight, too. Nice uh, to see you as well. Thank you. Can you fill us in a little bit on this? Uh, yeah, simply this is uh, to cover cover the increase in the steps um, when the dispatch is negotiated. There were a couple of steps that were dropped off one and an increases to other steps. So this is just to cover the uh, wage increases as a result of that. Okay. Uh, any comments or questions? Ed, you're, you're good with this, obviously. Uh, spot on. I mean, these are contractual obligations as a result of uh, negotiations that were settled after the budget was passed by town. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Thank you. Our next transfer, also under police, this is an interdepartmental transfer. Um, amount requested $550 to the firearm stipend account. Uh, there was a deficit created as a result of promotion and new hire and patrol. This is coming from the command stipend account. Uh, I'm just going to open this up to any questions on this. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Thank you, Lieutenant. I know we're not done with you either, right? All right, our last transfer, this is under town clerk. This is a reserve account transfer uh, to clerical. Amount requested $633.89. And amount requested is for deficit due to a step increase. Any questions or comments? Yeah, question, should it be coming from the reserve for salary and wages account instead of the regular reserve? Yes. I believe that was the intent. It was the intent. They didn't, they didn't put it on there, but we, I, I would draw it from the salary and wage reserve okay. account. Okay, gotcha. Motion question. to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, so voted. Thank you. Okay. Okay. On to the budgets. Our first budget tonight. Uh, I don't know how you got to the top of the list here, Chief Coleman. But fire rescue is up first. If if you'd like to come on up and join us. And. Uh, my drill the last few years has been asking for kind of a bit of an overview, highlights, uh, what's going on, what you're looking to do, Chief. So if you could fill us in on that, and then we'll get into the just the deep, couple of details on the budgets and subtotals. Sure. Uh, just give me a second, Mr. Chairman. We'll also have a quick discussion on uh, your capital also. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, good evening to the rest of the committee. Uh, good to be here this evening. Um, 
So a lot's been going on in the department uh, over the last year. We finished 2016 uh, with our busiest year on record. Uh, 2015, we actually set a record and then uh, decided to top it again in 2016. So the call volume uh, still continues to increase. Uh, you know, over the last 10 years, it's been uh, trending up 2-3% a year over the last uh, 10 years. We really don't see at this point any sign of that slowing down. We're already ahead of our call volume uh, as of today, uh, where we were on this day last year. Uh, so there is a lot going on in the department, a lot of good things going on uh, in the department. Um, I'd like to start off uh, talking a little bit about uh, ambulance receipts. I know that's something uh, that, that I like to talk about every year. I know uh, uh, many committee members uh, have questions on the ambulance receipts. Uh, so uh, we received this report yesterday uh, from Comstar, uh, just sort of a snapshot over the last three years for fiscal uh, 14, 15, and 16. Um, and I have the numbers uh, to date from July 1st of 16 uh, as of yesterday, March 7th. And uh, we're trending uh, the same this year as we have in the last uh, two years. Our you know, percentage uh, collection rate continues to be in the 95, 96 uh, percent rate, uh, 1.2 million over fiscal 14, fiscal 15. Uh, to date, we're currently collected uh, 740,754 uh, with still four months left to go, still collections. Uh, but when you trend that out, uh, we're still on track to have the same 95 percent collection with the same you know, around one point, high 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2 million dollars. So ambulance receipts are right where we anticipate and they're right on track with what they've been over the last uh, two years. Uh, so as far as the budget goes, um, a lot of moving parts uh, in, in this year's budget within the department. Uh, we have uh, some medical retirements uh, that we're, we're st are still pending over the next couple of months. Uh, we have some new uh, employees that will be coming in uh, as of July 1 uh, through a schedule change that was negotiated uh, through the firefighters union. So when you, when you look at the budget, and uh, you all should have an amended budget in front of you that has today's date, 1126 this morning, that was printed. Uh, the only change in this amended budget was in the firefighter line item, there was an increase of $9 from the budget that you presented. So that's the only change in the, in this amended budget. But um, well, we didn't wait till next week. It was probably 18 but Yeah. <laughs> so when you when you look at this budget, when you go down and you look at the bottom line of this budget with a $324,565 increase, total increase of 12.36%, uh, it's a little deceiving. Uh, and, and I think the best way to explain the percentage increases uh, in this in this budget is this way, is that in fiscal 16, we actually had a budget uh, reduction. Our budget was actually reduced Used in 16. So we're, we're one, we, we're, com we're coming into 18 with an already reduced budget from 16 that we never caught up with in 17. And second, uh, as part of the schedule change that the firefighters negotiated, they essentially, uh, they took no COLA raise for this for three years. So essentially what they did was the equivalent of what they would have received in a COLA of the 2%, which is what the other bargaining units received, that 6% was applied to the 18 budget in order to adjust or, or appropriate the money for the firefighters needed for the schedule change. So they, they took no COLA in order to apply that 6% in fiscal 18. Uh, and then with an additional, you'll see the note on the bottom, there was another offset of 100, an additional offset of 164,956 that was taken from the ambulance receipts on top of the normal 750 that we offset that covered the balance of that. So there was no, no COLA increase in 17, there will be no COLA increase next year, but everything was just applied this year. So that's why that number, that's why that number is inflated. So we, we we're not going to be here next year, mm -hmm. you know, with another inflated number like this, uh, you know, because of COLA raises or so every, everything that revolved around the schedule change was addressed and was designed to be addressed in one fiscal year. 
Now, uh, I know, Mr. Chairman, you had asked Mr. Kazanovich just for some sort of highlights of kind of what makes up that 324,000. So uh, the four firefighter paramedic uh, positions total uh, 213,727. Uh, because of the one, two, three, four, five, six, the seven things that I'm going to list are all increases to the budget that are related to the 42 hour work week and related to the addition of the new firefighter paramedics. So the, the medics, two, uh, 213, 727, an increase in their license and certifications uh, by $8,900, uh, increase in overtime of 62,365. Now, I just want to point out in the overtime number that. Even though there's an increase in the overtime of 62,365, it's not that we anticipate that there's going to be more overtime. Their hourly rate changed by virtue of the schedule change, their hourly rate is going up. So we anticipate the same amount of hours of overtime to be spent, but because it's at a higher rate of pay because mm -hmm. of the schedule change, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. the increase in the overtime. Uh, an additional 10000 in holiday pay, uh, protective clothing, 2000 and then an additional $3,250 in clothing allowance. So that comes to a total of $300,309.69 that's, uh, that's directly related to the contractual obligations relative to the 42-hour work week. Additionally, uh, there was another 24565 that were just general increases to the budget, line items, uh, you know, contractual uh, with myself and the administrative assistant, roughly $5,500, an increase of 665 in dues and meetings, uh, new equipment by $4,000, medical supplies by $1,000, and really uh, the big change uh, in this budget that I'm happy to report and happy to uh, to see is the restoration of the deputy fire chief's position. And that is uh, an additional $12,507, which was tacked on to what the assistant chief's current pay is in order to, to make up the difference of his, his new salary of $91,000. So with all of that, that totals the 324565 that you see at the bottom of the budget. Okay, great. Yeah, my, my biggest thing I couldn't figure out, and I certainly didn't have this level of detail was the overtime piece and I might even have the same question for police in terms of the overtime and could be different answer there yeah. um, but thanks for answering that question up front on it we knew there were a lot of moving parts uh, a lot of creative finance with mm -hmm. this um, and, and all to the good as far as I'm concerned mm -hmm. on what we've accomplished here I will open this up to questions uh, anyone except Ed you get last chance that's all any questions? Kevin? Just uh, relative to the four new positions, mm -hmm. you said firefighter paramedics, are those all going to be um, paramedic positions? Or I know some of the newer people came into the basic EMT certification. Yeah, so there's actually, uh, on July 1st, there's going to be a total of five new that are starting. Four will be firefighter paramedics that are d related to, again, the 42-hour work week, that contractual piece to maintain the shift staffing. Uh, then we hired a, a firefighter EMT, uh, and that is going to be replacing one of the medical retirements that we're anticipating is going to happen sometime in March or April. So that replacement will start in July. So there'll be a total of five new positions starting July 1. Four will be firefighter paramedics. One will be a firefighter EMT. Trevor, anything? No. Good. Um, question. Yep. Because you've, um, there are more employees now, basically, in the other shift, do you anticipate that there'll be fewer overtime hours? There's actually not more employees per shift. So with the without getting into too much detail because we really don't have that much time tonight, right. but the 40, the, this whole 48 hour, 42 hour work week has been, uh, in, the, in the 11 years that I've been here, this has been the, the biggest bone of contention with the firefighters union in the 11 years that I've been here. And I'm, I think everybody's happy that we were finally able to see this 42 mm -hmm. hour work week come to fruition. Currently today, under the 48-hour work week, we have eight full-time firefighters 
per shift. Right. Groups one, two, and three have eight. Group four only has four. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays is a mix of the other groups that make up the day. When they went to the 42-hour work week, part of making the whole thing work as far as the 42-hour work week was we had to hire four additional people to put on to group right. four. Yeah. So on July 1st, even though we're bringing on new positions, mm -hmm. our total shift complement for the day has not changed. Okay. So we do not anticipate less and less overtime. We, we anticipate the same amount of hours which is which again is what I what I alluded to earlier we're anticipating the same amount of hours but because they're going from a 48 to a 42 hour work week at current pay mm -hmm. their hourly rate goes up which in turn means their overtime rate goes up mm -hmm. so if you take the same amount of overtime hours that we're spending today on their new rate that's where we get the estimated mm -hmm. Gotcha. Total of seventy-two thousand, including the holiday overtime. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Just, just Kev, 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 absolutely. I'm just noticing there's just a minuscule difference between a firefighter EMT pay and a firefighter paramedic pay. I think it's like fifty-six dollars a, a week weekly, if I'm looking at it correctly. Is that? Uh, no, it's a little. It's a little more than that. I can. I can tell you. Um, it's about a two thousand dollar difference annually. I can tell you. Um, a step one, we have. Uh, I can't remember. Did we negotiate another? Is it seven or six? We have six steps on the firefighter side. So a step one firefighter paramedic in the door is fifty four thousand one forty six. Okay. A step one basic EMT is fifty one thousand two eighty nine. So it's it's just about. Twenty-seven, twenty-eight hundred dollar difference annually between the two, and then as they climb their steps, um, it goes. Um, it's about the same. It's about a three thousand dollar difference as they climb their steps up to step six. You're right. About fifty bucks. <laughs> Don't my math on that. Any other questions on yeah, this? A couple yeah. more. Yeah, um, no, we just transferred in $4,000 from um, fire suppression to medical supplies. Mm -hmm. But I, or 4000 yeah. So I noticed that the um, account, though, that the budget that you have is only a couple of thousand over, or 1000 over last year. Is that going to be enough? Go ahead. Uh, I would say yes at mm -hmm. this time. We're making some changes currently. I'm not sure how familiar you are with the EpiPens and how much money they've been. Um, we're able to drop those off the ambulance and just buy the Epi straight out, which is a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. So we'll end up saving thousands um, of dollars that way on the medical supplies. So we're hoping the $1,000 increase will be enough to um, accommodate everything for next year. Okay. Thank it, you. Again, just to follow up on that, I mean, it's a moving target. Right. I, you know, the minute medication mm -hmm. prices go up, call volume goes up, it, you know, it, it's mm -hmm. sort of a moving target. But, mm -hmm. you know, our best guess estimate, Ms. Kavanaugh, on how that is we looked at our three-year average at 33,765. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, to, to be conservative, you know, we're hoping the 32 will be enough. But, you know, we, we really kind of relied heavily on the three-year average mm -hmm. in order to to come up with the 32. Okay. Thank you. Another question, um, I remember we there were some repairs done at the West Street Station. How is that building doing? Um, you know, both of our facilities are, are in good shape. I mean, I, I've said this publicly before. I mean, our, our members take a tremendous amount of pride in, in our mm -hmm. building. So uh, they're very well maintained. Uh, the upstart of the DPW facilities uh, has been huge. Uh, they've done a ton of work, uh, both between headquarters and West Street, in, mm -hmm. in kind of helping us with some of the, the routine maintenance and repairs. Um, uh, you know, I, I had the opportunity over the summer, uh, early, actually in the fall, uh, to meet with the master plan committee and, and we toured both facilities um, you know and, and like I said to them uh, you know both of the facilities you know they're aging you know West Street's you know over 60 years old and the thing that I point out about West Street all the time is the building's over 60 years old and we're, we're currently in a facility that was never designed to be a fire station mm -hmm. you know we're, we're essentially living in out of the cafeteria and the office space of an elementary school mm -hmm. 
so there are certainly operational challenges that come with the building. As far as the general maintenance, the cleanliness, you know, I think we do a pretty good job with, with the resources that we have to upkeep it, uh, but operationally, there are a lot of concerns, you know, operationally with the facility. Uh, headquarters, you know, the same the same thing. Uh, you know, when the, the building's, you know, now over 50 years old, um, I have some pictures actually from when the building was opened and you can, you recognize a lot of the same fixtures that are still sitting in the building today that were there the day that they opened. You know, some of the things we've changed out, um, well, but last year we, we had the opportunity to do um, a facility upgrade to our kitchen and hallway area, which was outstanding. DPW did that. Uh, and this year we'll talk about capital, I'm assuming, but we have $35,000 appropriated this year for phase two uh, at headquarters for the living space. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, areas that haven't been touched in 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, you know, the, the, the station was built in the 50s. Uh, and it was built at a time where there not only was no, no full-time staff, but there wasn't even a vision of full-time staff. Mm -hmm. So over the last 50 years to go you know, from a building that wasn't designed to house anybody to now you know, trying to maintain a, a full-time career staff of 35 people and you know, 10 you know, part-time on-call people, uh, you know, space is an issue. Um, and you know, again, trucks, trucks in the 50s were not as big as trucks are today. Day. So we actually have, it's kind of funny the way it works, but they used to put more trucks in the building, you know, back then than we do now, but we actually have less space. We got less space, but less, you know, less trucks, but less space because they take up more. Um, so we're really cramming a lot in there. Um, but again, you know, facility wise, things are maintained, things are repaired, nothing's falling apart, uh, but operationally, uh, both buildings have, have their challenges. And this is a conversation that I've not only had with the manager. And, and Mr. Kazanovich, uh, we've had some good discussions about um, in, in the very near future, uh, having some serious conversations about what the future plans are going to be uh, for either expansion, renovation, or, or new uh, existing facilities for the fire rescue department. I mean, even if we were to look at, at something to say, you know, well, we wanted to do something in five years, the reality is, is those conversations need to start today. Mm -hmm. So in the very near future, we're going to have to have some conversations. Mm -hmm. All set? Yeah. All right. We have an operating budget uh, requested that is $2,951,511. Um, which is a $324,565 increase over the, I'm going to call it the original 2017 budget, so, and I don't believe yours would have changed any, but um, per our report, it's a 12.3% uh, increase uh, over last year. Do you have any further questions or comments? Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Thank you. Chief, stay here if you could. Uh, let's just open the CIP real quick and see if there's any questions or comments on it. Actually, going to open uh, questions on this. And I'm, I'm looking uh, actually two questions. The first one is: uh, Do we have any uh, details yet on the fire tower replacement, which is earmarked for fiscal 20? If I'm reading this correctly, to start, uh, we we do not have any update on that yet. Uh, other than that's the answer I expected. Uh, by the way. <laughs> Can I, which line are you looking at? Am I, am I looking at uh, fire tower replacement? Are you looking at it, where it says replace tower ladder? I'm looking, if I'm adding an FY 2020, Steve, about four down. Yeah. 
My eyes are better than someone here. That's great. Are you looking at what? I might not have it. Right? I see looking at you're looking at fire tower replacement, not the um, it, nothing with a six year lease purchase, right? No. I'm I'm sorry, I I, I didn't have the, the one that you're looking at. Okay. Um, I, I must not have So what we have started. starting in fiscal twenty is eighty seven thousand five hundred scheduled for at least the next three years on that. What what I was expecting is there there aren't any real details yet on this. Well, uh, what, what I can tell you is that we were um, the life expectancy of the fire training tower on West Street. The facility was constructed in 1999. It has a 20 year life expectancy. Uh, we are currently waiting to hear uh, whether or not we will be awarded a federal grant to replace that. We, we applied for uh, this past fall. Um, actually, Lieutenant Brigham sitting in the audience uh, was uh, one of the members of the grant team uh, that wrote a, an excellent grant um, for a half a million dollars for replacement of that training facility. Uh, we think it's a good grant. We, we, the narrative was very well written. Uh, we went in with a regional approach to it with, uh, I believe, six or seven other communities, which kind of ups our chances uh, in terms of receiving the money. Um, we were actually at a conference last week, and Lieutenant Brigham and I had an opportunity to talk to the grant administrator from FEMA, uh, and he said that they're probably going to start making awards in April. So we're hoping to hear this spring uh, whether or not uh, we are successful in that. The plan is, is that if we don't get the grant this year, we're going to reapply for it next year. Uh, and then if for whatever reason we were denied two years in a row, then we would plan on so keeping close. it in the capital on 2020. But our, our plan and approach was we at least have two years to take two bites at the apple from, from uh, for grant money, federal grant money to replace it. And uh, that's where we are. So we're waiting to hear on that grant at this point. So the estimated cost based on, once again, I, I see three years of level funding. Is it somewhere between four fifty and 500000 That is correct. Somewhere in there. So a five-year plan right now of which we can only see three Correct. limitations of our plan. Yes. My second and last question is regarding um, uh, replacing engine number one. Yep. Um, just, is that a four-year pay on pay that? Would be, what's that the would be five that? as well. Five, yep. five years. So what's the total cost on that or estimated cost? No, it's going to be just under, uh, yeah, about so four, 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 eight, four, four, four eighty. Okay, great. That's all I had on this. Uh, I'll open it up to any other questions. Mm -hmm. I'm all right just a quick question yep. on yep. The, the abbreviations where it says, uh, you know, five YRLP. Can you just explain to me what the, what, as far as any of the abbreviations next to the. Oh, for the ambulances? The ambulances, the carnival yeah. one, is that? Yeah. Lease so, purchase. Lease purchase. Lease purchase. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. So I thought yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions? We're not going to vote on this anyway, so we just want to make sure we know what we were dealing with on that. So there's a chance we might hear sometime uh, later next month regarding this uh, FEMA grant? Well, they, they start awarding in April, but okay. they award right through July and August. So it okay. could be anywhere from April to August. Good, good luck with that. Thank you. Well, I we, you guys we, use that a lot. So. We, yeah, we actually, uh, the grants team wrote two grants. They wrote, wrote one for the training tower, and because that was regional, that allowed us to apply for a second grant specifically for Auburn. Uh, so uh, Lieutenant Brigham and I wrote another grant for uh, that totaled about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the replacement of all of our portable radios. So we're we're hopeful on that one as well. Yeah. That's great. great. Yeah. Any other comments or questions while we have the chief? Appreciate it, Chad. I just wanted to point out one thing uh, regarding the deputy chief's position. Just so you know, when you see it, or if you see it, uh, which I'm hoping you will before July one, uh, the, the plan was to actually, uh, because we're waiting on a couple of medical retirements, it was actually my hope that the deputy chief's position uh, was going to be restored and promoted back on January first. Uh, but there, we're still working through the retirement process. Uh, we have a couple of meetings at the end of this month, uh, but it is my intent that as soon as um, 
either one or both of those members, depending on how it shakes out, uh, is retired, at that time uh, I'll be making a promotion of Assistant Chief Johnson to Deputy Chief, and Lieutenant Brigham uh, will be backfilling his shift commander spot and will be promoted to captain. So that is already in the 17 budget, where we're really just kind of waiting for these retirements to shake out. So it is my hope that that, that is going to be taken care of this fiscal year before July 1, but I just wanted to bring that to the to the committee's attention, just so, you know, if you saw media reports, if you, if you heard it, uh, it is our hope that we're actually going to be able to take care of this before July 1st. Yeah. So you're already running a little late on yeah, what your bit. time frame on yep. that anyway, so. Yep. Um, okay, uh, I guess unfortunately good to hear though. Yep. I guess. All right, anything else? Chief, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank Have a great day. See evening. you guys. Stay safe. Our next budget is the uh, police department budget, and we'll also look at the uh, uh, CIP plan as part of that. So, Lieutenant, Chief. Mr. Chairman, um, you know Lieutenant Harrigan. I'd like to take an opportunity to induce, uh, introduce you to uh, Todd Lemon. He's also a lieutenant. Uh, he replaced Mark you. Moss, uh, who retired. Yep. <clears throat> um, lieutenant Lemon is here tonight uh, because I have the uh, ability to retire in two years, and I'll have 32 years of service in, um, in two years. So I wanted to kind of step back. Lieutenant Harrigan is going to present the budget to you tonight. Uh, Lieutenant Lemon is going to do the same thing next year. Uh, we only have so many finance committee meetings and so many town meetings in between now and then. So I wanted to kind of get the ball rolling um, tonight with uh, with you people. But if you have any individual specific questions for me, I'll, I'll be here and I'll be happy to answer those. Great. Thanks, Thank Chief. You. All right. Lieutenant, the uh, floor is yours. If you can give us a little bit of highlights on the Thank budget you. for you. Uh, through the chair. Uh, the police fiscal year 18 budget before you tonight for consideration is a result of budget deliberations and agreed upon recommendation of the chief of police and the town manager. Uh, it represents an increase of $256,442 over current fiscal year. It provides for two new positions within the police department, both patrol. Um, there's be one funded position July 1st, 2017, and one deferred until January 1st, 2018. Uh, the, the, for budgetary purposes, those two positions were funded at top step with a bachelor's degree. Uh, so there's, it's kind of a moving target. We're not sure at this point what we're going to do, if these are going to be new hires through the lateral process or new hires off a civil service list. So um, if we do go off the list, the additional monies in the salary account will offset any costs for the physicals, the academy tuition, equipment, and whatever they may need. Um, so that was the strategy behind uh, that. In addition to the two new positions, uh, as a result of collective bargaining, there are two items uh, on the budget, one being longevity and one being shift differential. Uh, the longevity is a separate line item um, that you see in our budget and the shift differential at this point for 2018 affects just the uh, patrol side of things. So the differential is going to be 25 cents for the per hour for the 3 to 11 shift and 50 cents per hour for the 11 to 7 shift. Um, so the impact to the budget, a uh, reason for the increase of the, the two new positions and all the line items that have increases um, for those positions and the collective bargaining agreement and then the remaining approximately $101,000 is a result of contractual obligations uh, that were negotiated for FY17 and FY18. Questions? That's a mouthful. <laughs> Once again, my concern I had with that on this is explaining this. We're dealing with our 17 budget, which did not reflect uh, the, the contracts that have been, you know, mm -hmm. I'll say awarded after that. So the, the difference here, the increase is actually. It's not correct. Right. Not really, what truly was going on in 17 versus 18. Right. So that was that was a bit of a challenge to try to look at that. I'm not sure how he's going to address town meeting on that unless uh, 
Well, for the first year, if I may, for the yeah. first year in a long time, we finally uh, made some considerations up front rather than relying on the reserve fund transfer to provide for those contractual increases during the course of the year. That in itself has skewed the numbers mm -hmm. as far as the way the budget is being presented. Uh, so you, and I think we've, in, we've conveyed this to the board when we presented the budget last week. Um, in most cases, the budget appears to have a 4% increase, when in fact it's only a 2% increase because the budget numbers for FY17 reflect the meaning of town action and not the transfers during the year. Right. If we were to update that on an ongoing basis, we would be updating that weekly every right. time you prepare or approve a transfer. So um, that's something we explained to the Finance Committee. That's something we'll explain on the town meeting floor as well. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That was just a concern I had on just explaining. You know. I think um, when we discussed it, it was we knew we were going to have um, funded vacant positions or in title, so we knew we'd have enough um, money there to offset the co the cost of the uh, contractual increases. So um, there were no transfers needed uh, at that time. So it looks like it's all impacting FY18 because of that. Yep. Yeah. So the overtime number, um, based on all this information, I was I was about this initially going to say, well, why didn't that maybe go down a little bit? You're adding staff to it, but obviously you're going to take into account the increase. Even more. Right. And now I'm thinking to myself, is that a good number? On the other side, is it adequate? In all honesty, 200000 it doesn't even touch what the <laughs> true need is. Um, it is what it is. Uh, we're, again, relying on IO, IOD reimbursements coming back to backfill some of that. Um, it's unfortunate that we've looked at that as a, a funding mechanism back into our overtime, but um, if you if if the dispatcher overtime grant was to go away, and that represents roughly forty-seven thousand dollars in dispatch overtime, because prior to that, dispatch overtime came out of this same line item, um, so we come close to spending all of that on overtime every year. So they just got increases also, so that two hundred thousand dollars doesn't doesn't get you very far uh, at the rates that we're paid. So um, we'll just keep our fingers crossed that sure. reimbursements come in and then there's money in the salary to offset any any overage and overtime. You spent plenty of time up here discussing transfers with right. us in June, you know, so that's not a bad thing, but you know, it's it's how we budget, I guess, right now. Kev? In that same, uh, same thread regarding court time, uh, court overtime, Seeing a three-year average is fifty-one thousand, and you're only asking for forty-five. I'm just having brief discussions with the chief before your call volume is up. The amount of cases uh, you guys are working on is that even close to enough for? Um, it had been. Uh, there was an uptick one particular year, but um, again, it's it's a moving target. Uh, if you look back the year that uh, we had to do a transfer of roughly 15,000, the cases that were coming to court, happened, the arrest was made two years prior to that. So you don't know what's going to get pled out, what's going to go to court. Um, so our best guess, like this year, it looks like we're going to be close. We're on track um, to spend the 45, uh, probably get us through the 50 weeks. Uh, so we might be on the hook for a transfer request coming there, but uh, we can't dictate who's getting summons to court, how many guys, like sometimes they'll summons in everybody for an OUI case, so you're paying six uh, a minimum of, is it four hours, a, four for per guy to go to court on one case that could be continued, and some of these things get continued and continued and continued, so um, we're trying with the, the other increases, keeping our fingers crossed and hoping that we can get by on the 45000 Mr. Chairman, if I may, this is one area that we are concerned about that we're keeping an eye on. Mm -hmm. I can tell you as these positions are being filled, there is no longer the financial flexibility within the department mm -hmm. as a result of those positions being open, uh, being able to transfer money into right. these accounts, whether it be overtime court. Right. The lieutenant is correct by saying uh, we do put our IOD reimbursements back into the overtime account. The true expense for overtime during the course of a fiscal year 
isn't close to 200, it's more like 280. Right. We're pumping about $50,000 of IOD reimbursement money into the account as a result of filling those shifts uh, for that individual being out for a period of time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, A, we gotta make sure that we have a policy that provides a benefit for that officer to be out for a period of time. We could get a significantly lower premium if we eliminate that, but it's really gonna put a hardship on the OT account. We've run the numbers on that. It makes sense to pay a higher premium uh, rather than remove it uh, because it would cost the taxpayers more money going that route. Mm -hmm. That's something we evaluate on an annual basis. So um, this is something that we may be forced to revisit at a fall town meeting, uh, but it's too early to say what that Truly sure. is going to be at this point in time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the way it is every year. Right. You, you, you can't predict. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm guessing you're up to around 90 percent grade on your budget. You've been coming to us mm -hmm. for several years with budgets. Right. And that's it's amazing we can pull it in that close. And I know we do a lot of transfers, and hey, that's what we get paid to do anyways in June. Right. Hopefully the air conditioning works <laughs> this year. Uh, but that's just the way it goes. You know. Um, through the chair, I guess my question just basically is the three-year average is 51. We've got a 2% contractual increase, which at time and a half is even greater than that. Why are we going $6,000 below that uh, right after the gate? Yep. I think we're just hoping that that one uh, year that's driving that three-year average up to 51 was an anomaly, and that we don't we don't see it again. Um, but like I said, uh, knowing the increases to the budget in other areas, we were cautiously optimistic that the 45 was going to be enough to get us through. Mm -hmm. Personally, that, yeah. that's, that's a number where you, you don't mind seeing it higher. I mean, the guys are out there working, they're up there solving cases, they're bringing people to court. Um, that's you know a number I would certainly support. Uh, you know, whatever number you threw at us, I would say is is the right thing to do. But yeah, absolutely. If, if this is the process, again, I'm relatively new to this. Uh, it's coming back for transfers to backfill and fund it. Uh, that, right. know, I'm fine with that as well. Right. And if we're not hiring on time, yeah, you know, we're running a little late. We've we've created. Uh, you know, unfortunately, an availability of funds for that, and that's how we've been we've able been to cover fun, this right. for quite some time on that. Uh, as Eddie said, with filling those positions now, that certainly will put an added strain on that. Those funds will not be available in terms of uh, open positions. Then again, I don't want anyone in public safety between the police and the fire to continue to get burnt out. I mean, mm -hmm. I can see what the fire department did. What a great thing to do. So those guys aren't getting burnt right. out. And you guys have been, you've had open positions for years now that mm -hmm. we just, we got to get to it and uh, be safer for everybody and probably more effective. Uh, as good a job as you guys do. So, Kev, I, I understand your point on this, and uh, I, I guess the point's made to Eddie if, uh, the, you know, if we can keep an eye, open eye on this to maybe add something to it within the process. If I can add something to the conversation, um, not only do we look at the three-year average, but when we meet, we look at year-to-date and how the numbers are running to see if it's mm -hmm. not holding true to the three-year average. So I just ran a report today. Uh, so the core time is running about 70% year to date. We should be at the 75 percentile mark at the end of March, provided it runs consistent throughout the year. So we're pretty much on target. Uh, it's probably trending a little bit above the 45. Mm -hmm. I think we'd have to see if it runs heavy in the last quarter of the fiscal year or whether it runs true every quarter. That's something the lieutenant and I can take a look at. And if it appears to be uh, short, I have no problem making a recommendation to increase that line item to bring it into a more uh, yeah, in line that. with current year expenditures. So. And, if, if there's no opposition to that. And that uh, doesn't necessarily have to happen for May 2nd or 3rd either. Uh, as we look at the budget again in the fall, when we have a real good idea where our, mm -hmm. our revenues came in at, et cetera. So, you know, this falls into that, I'll say, you know, Julie's wish list of stuff that we can kind of address. We try not to do it to the operating budget, mm -hmm. but this is your perfect example where we're finally getting up to a near full staffing on this, and we got to make sure we've got this covered. Um, we don't want you guys to think you've got any pressure to not be at quarter or, or any of those things. <coughs> 
Um, yeah, a little tough road to hoe in March. Right. So we'll see what's going on. Okay. Uh, any other questions on this? Because I really had nothing else outside of just trying to understand what's happening in 2017 that's affecting 18 and the and the ads to staff on it, which is a great thing finally to do. Anything? No, no questions. Okay. A motion to recommend. All right. We've got a, uh, a town manager and department request a, a total police budget, if I'm reading correctly, $4,338,103. That's just over $250,000 increase from the original fiscal 17 appropriation or 6.28% increase. Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. We have one abstain. So we've got four, so mm -hmm. we do pass on this. And obviously, if and when we can look at this, um, I think the only thing we'll be doing is hopefully pushing that number up. So we'll see how that rolls. So thank you. Don't go anywhere. Let's take a quick look at the CIP. questions first again here we go um, first question I should know this you're, you're adding a, a 25 grand for furniture replacement in the, in the out year in 2022 building will be 21 years old then 20 22 22 years old and most of its original furniture to the building okay. with the exception of a few chairs so yeah. you can imagine no, I don't want them. yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> So the building was open in 2000? Yes. Okay, I was trying to remember what year that was. A uh, couple other questions, and this kind of goes back to some, I thought, a um, couple of questions that came up at the last town meeting from one of the town meeting members regarding cruisers, which was poorly timed and I think poorly judged on that person's uh, part at that period of time. Your police cruises. Average annual miles on those? Uh, for a frontline cruiser, um, probably 12,000, mm -hmm. I would guess, okay. per and vehicle. I, and I know they're on for quite a bit more time than not always. Right. We, we try to allow for at least eight hour period of off time for each cruiser. Mm -hmm. So they're not running 24-7. Uh, right. um, so when we moved to the three vehicles replacement schedule, we were finally able to catch up and our fleet is actually in pretty good condition, comparatively speaking. Um, so that's worked out, but that's been the goal of ours um, since the implementation of the, the replacement schedule is to have some off time so that they're, they're not going to keep them in warranty longer and keep the miles down on, on the vehicle. So, so far it's, it's worked well. Um, I know in past years we're able to retain some cruises for detail, so we're not putting those engine hours on on the new f cruises in the fleet, and we've been able to reallocate our vehicles to, if they're roadworthy, to other divisions within the town. Um, otherwise, they're sold for either scrap or they go to auction if there if there's any value to that. Right. Average life of the vehicles before they're taken off of the front line? Uh, I'd say probably four years is four years. good before the um, maintenance repair dollars get up there and whatnot, but it depends on um, the people assigned to that car. Some you think are relatively new, some guys drive harder than other guys, it's just the, the nature of the beast. Um, I'd say the road conditions of late with the highway have done a phenomenal job, so uh, roads are in much better condition, so there's not that wear and tear on the vehicles either, so um, kudos to Bill Coyle and his staff, mm -hmm. and I think they've done a great job, so. Okay, that's all I had. I'll open it up. Any other questions? I had one, just out of curiosity, um, on the police vehicle purchases line out in 2020. I just see a like a $45,000 increase. 
um, in terms from going from 120 to 165. I'm just curious. As that's to um, so. Anytime you see that, that's a year in which the chief is allowed a new vehicle. Okay. So that's a four vehicle year um, where either three at 120 or now the cost of the vehicles are going up. So. Um, for 2022, it's up to 132,000 for, and that represents three. Okay. For that year as well. So. Thank you. Yep. Good question. Question. Yeah, question for Ed. How are we paying for these? We're not bonding the vehicles anymore. We never did, right? Because they were lease purchase. Uh, no, I mean, yeah. ever since we implemented our financial mm -hmm. policy and we are feeding the capital program with tax levy money every year. If you look in the middle of the page, there's an mm -hmm. abbreviation that indicates the funding source for each uh, CIP item. TL is tax levy. Okay, there are five different funding sources, which you will see mm -hmm. on the summary page of the capital on how we fund our capital program every year. Mm -hmm. um, so if we can turn to that page for one minute. So for FY18, we have 1.717 million of capital recommendation. And, it, and the funding sources break down as follows. 110 is coming from sewer retained earnings. 28,170 is coming from um, our cable access. 862,000 in change is coming from tax levy. 42,000 is directly coming from ambulance to fund uh, our ambulance lease. 25,000 is coming from our CIP trust, which is interest earned on about a $1.6 million uh, investment. In the remainder, 649,000 is coming from bond proceeds. So if you follow that all the way through 2022, because we're in, we have an infusion of roughly one tenth of two and a half percent. You are seeing those bond proceeds going down. Mm -hmm. It does balloon in, in 2022 because of school capital, but that's something we're addressing with them. Uh, that may not hold. That that's something that is just mm -hmm. something we have to work on. Yeah. Knowing that we'll have a balance of stabilization that we may be able to throw at that capital program in that year. Okay, so can you? So we're but we're buying these vehicles. We're not doing right. these purchases anymore. No, we're buying them. We're buying them outright. Yep. Okay, that's what I wanted. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Lieutenant? All right, great. Thanks Thank for you. your time. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant. We'll see you in June. Yes. We'll see you May. before then. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks for your time tonight. Mm -hmm. Good to see all of you tonight. Thank you. Be safe. Thank you very much. Okay, our next uh, budget this evening is uh, emergency management. $11,500 in total, which is $1,500 over fiscal 17, and uh, that increase represents the uh, stipend for the director of uh, uh, emergency management increase in his stipend. Uh, any questions on this? Kevin? Just a quick oversight. What, what is emergency management? Like, who is, what, what are the responsibilities? Uh, Lieutenant Morris, former Lieutenant Morris, is the director of emergency management. Uh, emergency management is in place for um, events that should occur, whether it be hurricane, snowstorm, anything that requires us to open up the EOC. Uh, it is manned by emergency management. Um, I can tell you in years past, it's been uh, open several times uh, during harsh winters, uh, during situations that uh, require um, us to shelter people. Um, that's basically the, the purpose of, and, and to coordinate with FEMA and FEMA as, as required. Thank you. Yeah. Right. And before we vote on this, Ed, do we have any capital? No. Signed? We don't. Okay. I didn't think we did. Just making sure on that. Any other questions on uh, this budget request? Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Thank you. All right. 
right. Our next budget is the reserve fund. And uh, Ed, while we're looking up the reserve fund, can you just give us a quick overview what the intent is on that? And I know within our financial policies, we've got some targets of what we try to keep. All right, so if you look at the financial policies adopted by the Finance Committee and as well as the Board of Selectmen, there's a financial policy that uh, suggests that we increase our reserve account uh, to provide a buffer for extraordinary and unforeseen expenses in the general fund. For instance, overtime situation that we talked tonight. Snow and ice. Uh, we made an effort to increase snow and ice to take the pressure off the reserve account uh, to uh, provide dollars that are or money spent that quite honestly is unanticipated. Um, I can tell you our snow and ice budget this year is over $200,000. We're going to have to rely heavily on a portion of our reserve account to offset that deficit. Uh, we do have a freeze in place, uh, currently a spending freeze, hopefully to attempt to try to sweep some surplus funds to mitigate that deficit as well. It appears we may have to raise a portion of that deficit on our recap sheet next year because we don't have the ability to cover the entire amount. Um, but that underscores the importance of building up that reserve account for situations such as the ones I just indicated to you. Okay. Um, there's really two pieces left to the reserve account, and we look at them separately because they're truly for very separate uh, items. There's a salary wage reserve and a reserve fund. The reserve fund... Um, there's a request of a $25,000 increase to $175,000 by the town manager for fiscal 18 over fiscal 17. The salary wage uh, reserve was actually $200,000 in fiscal 17 as we were negotiating, what was it, basically all the contracts in the town. So those are all been settled, therefore we don't need a significant dollar amount in there. So that's been dropped down to $40,000 for the salary wage um, reserve. For a total of $215,000 requested by the town manager, this is a drop from $350,000 in fiscal 17. Motion to uh, recommend uh, $215,000. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, so voted. Thank you. Okay, our next budget is the law department budget. And the law department budget consists of general counsel, negotiator, and special litigator. Um, total amount requested is uh, $120,000, which is flat funded versus the fiscal 17 appropriation. Um, I guess my question on that Ed, is uh, the negotiator line, I assumed was relied on somewhat for contracts uh, bargaining. The 35,000? Uh, a chair, no. Good. Uh, because right. we do our own negotiations, uh, town manager and I. Okay. Uh, that used to be significantly higher. Uh, we started negotiations, uh, administration started negotiations with the union back in, when Julie came back in 2011. Uh, if you look at the expenses back at that time, it was significantly higher than what you see now. So these are cases that may result in arbitration uh, where we do need Labor Council mm -hmm. to, um, to uh, litigate these matters on behalf of the town. So there could be a labor portion, but it's not directly related to negotiations. Okay, good. Can you, while we're looking at this, uh, give us a year to date on where we're standing? So, year to date, negotiator, budget of 35,000 we've expended, and this will probably be through January. $12,444 out of 35,000. Mm -hmm. okay. Roughly a third. Okay. So we look good there. Um, the on the other hand, general counsel, yeah. 
We've expended 47,000 out of 75. Um, so we're, we're on target to, to expend approximately 75. Now, we're using general counsel a lot more. General counsel is now involved with the disposition of the schools. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been actively involved with that. He's actively involved in um, reviewing language for the zoning bylaw changes, which is a, a big project. Uh, so those costs are gonna continue going into 18 and beyond. So that's why we uh, a level ask for a level funded budget. Okay. Which is actually down from the uh, three year average by ten thousand dollars. So, okay. Any questions, comments on this? What's the um, special question? Special litigator. We're adding that in again. Right. So special litigator is there in the event one. One regulatory board does not agree with the other regulatory board. Mm -hmm. Our town council supports both of those boards. In those cases, it presents a conflict, and we have to seek outside counsel for mm -hmm. those matters. We haven't spent any money, but there was a time when we spent a significant amount of money for a matter relative to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lowe's property, uh, where the former Yankee drummer was. We spent nexus mm -hmm. of 100000 for outside counsel. So... Typically, uh, it's there in case we need it, uh, and if not, it gives us some flexibility to work those dollars into either general counsel, labor counsel, if that f should fall short. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Do you have a motion on this? Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Two more budgets. Uh, town Hall. Next budget. Uh, let's see, Town Hall, Town Manager recommends a budget of $39,000, an increase of $8,800 over prior year, and um, the increase uh, is in part due to equipment maintenance and building maintenance. Those are usually good reasons for those. Uh, anything specific on this, Ed? Um, expected uh, things going on? Or just more uh, dealing with uh, the three-year average and more reasonable uh, budget? No, we've seen an uptick in our lease payments and monthly support costs for all of our copies throughout mm -hmm. general government. Um, I could tell you that the we're looking at one now for the senior center. It's God only knows how old, but it needs to be replaced. Uh, that cost has to be absorbed um, within general government as well. Everything else seems to be holding true, um, all but for that line item, which is under building maintenance. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Roll motion. Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Thank you. Our last budget tonight is uh, general services. And the town manager recommends a budget of $1,360,000, uh, $155, and that's a, a decrease of $1,500 uh, over prior year budget, which is kind of interesting. Electricity and street lights are in here, Ed, and I know we seem to be doing transfers all the time with those two accounts. I, um, so street lights, we still level funded, though. Why do I think we, we've been running over on street lights for the last couple of years? Well, our three-year average is 114. Uh, we're at 117. Um, okay. No, that's... I can tell you, year to date, we it appears right now that we're on target not to exceed. Mm -hmm. um, the electricity, on the other hand, may require some transfers. It's too early to say. Mm -hmm. Okay. But normally... I think throughout the uh, previous years, we had the financial flexibility to move money within general services because of motor vehicle fuel, which is all over the lot. You never know mm -hmm. what, yeah. how those costs are going to be <laughs> six months down the road. So, I mean, it's been good so far. Yeah. Um, so I was going to ask you, do you know where we're at? Yeah, uh, motor vehicle fuel.
And I, I will provide a, a, a updated status report to each of the members at the next meeting. Um, we've expended 85,000 year to date out of 180, so we're in good shape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. But gas prices per gallon have been steady yeah. over the course of the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Previous years, they, there was some major fluctuations. So yeah. not knowing that, I'm not comfortable reducing that, mm -hmm. not knowing what the market is going to, you know, I don't know mm -hmm. what the price is going to be. Sure. Uh, insurance and bonds? Uh, insurance and bonds, we made an adjustment at the fall town meeting. We don't get those renewals until early June. Um, right now, we're keeping our fingers crossed, hoping the 760 will uh, cover mm -hmm. um, those costs. Hopefully, when we dispose of the schools, that's going to lead to a reduction in insurance premiums because the carry insurance on a vacant school is... It's mm -hmm. pretty high. There's a lot of risk there. Um, so I believe we're going to have these schools for a period of time in the, in the course of FY18, even, those are, even though the bids are out on the street right now. They're out for 60 days. By the time they are evaluated, awarded, by the time you close, if in fact we have a potential or successful bidder, mm -hmm. uh, we should be able to, to transfer those at some point in fiscal 18. Okay. Any other questions or hmm. comments? Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Thank you. All right. That's our last budget tonight. Like I said, we're going to hold off on uh, minutes uh, where Trevor's, this is his first cycle on it. I don't know that we've got any minutes that we have a quorum of people just to confirm is okay. So we'll wait on mm -hmm. those. Um, let's see, before we adjourn, we all have a list, I think, of what budgets we've got scheduled for the next two weeks. Uh, next week we've got uh, Inspectional Services, ZBA, Solid Waste, and DPW. Um, with the following week, we've got the Town Clerk Election, School Department, Bay Path, and the Norfolk Assessment. I honestly think we've got a little bit of, uh, we could probably add something mm -hmm. next week. Uh, Ed, maybe youth. I know we're, we're going to hold back on uh, Council on Aging, right? Correct. But if we can add maybe one more in that, both Bill and Darlene do a very good job of doing a concise budget presentation to us. I would rather not wait and have a, a big meeting on the 5th, which we'd like to wrap up on the 5th, including warrant articles. Mm -hmm. If I can ask Sharon. Um, Outside of what's listed here, what's remaining? Do you know? Outside of what's listed yeah, here? Yeah. I think just capital. In library? Capital. In what? COA and library? Yep, those, veterans, are, those I, are listed here. Yeah. Um, cable TV, veterans. I think this is all the departments. Yeah, so just a just Department of... Capital and the Warren Articles. Yeah. So if we can add another one next week, I mean, we've, we've, we're running on pretty good time right now. Uh, that's fine. In fact, we may spend a little bit more time on the CIP for the DPW uh, anyways. So if we can squeeze in one more next week, great. Uh, if we can answer yeah. that, you know, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I think we can do that. If uh, that works out. So we may have one more budget added to this. Sharon will let us know just so we're all prepared. I appreciate everyone, you know, sharpening their mm -hmm. pencils tonight. And, a lot of good questions. So with that, um, we're good to go. I think for the next couple of weeks, we will not be meeting on the 29th. We've got a uh, town meeting on the 28th. Um, selfishly, I will not be able to make either one of those. So that's why I asked that I at least hold off on our budget meeting on the 29th. We don't need to meet two nights in a row while we're still getting along. So. Um, all right, so we're all set to go. Anything else? Any other questions or comments? And once again, we'll, we'll be doing the uh, CIPs as we go through department budgets while we have department heads here. So if nothing else, I'll uh, accept a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Thanks. Good night.